Good evening, everyone. What a great joy to see all of you. And once again, welcome to the pastoral talk with Reverend Dr. Joshua Yun. And today is a, ha a Memorial Day. We are preparing for Monday. But uh, together with me are very important people here together with us for this evening. And uh, on my right will be a wonderful Apostle of God and she's also the Human Resource Director of Mission TV. And on my left we have uh, Dr. Ken Smith and he's the Executive Director of Mission TV and with me as a founder and president of Mission TV. So on behalf of Mission TV community, we would like to say happy Memorial right. Day to all of you. Yes. Uh, it could be in advance or it could be in the same day, but Hallelujah. we want to say thank you so much for all of you. And as we are talking about the Memorial Day, it is uh, basically an, an American holiday and it's observed on the, last, uh, on the last Monday of the month. And the reason is to honor the men and the women who die as they are serving in the military of the U.S. So, and it usually occur on Monday, and this time will be on May 27. So, uh, once again, we'd like to say uh, appreciation to all of you. And uh, Dr. Ken, you want to say something about the Memorial Day? Oh, it's so coincidentally that it's the 27th, which means power of salvation. Interesting that at this particular teaching you're going to give, and I can't wait to hear it. I'll be silent. I'll be one taking notes. If you want to grab your pencil and paper and take notes with me, as Dr. J shares with us. But I want to say, power of salvation is so powerful. You know, it talks about not only our salvation, but what we're going through as salvation in our life. Whether we are going through it financially, we're going through it physically, or we're going through it emotionally. But this is an emotional time for America, and I think it's so apropos that you are speaking on this, and I. I can't wait to hear it, Dr. J. And uh, thank you, Dr. Ken Smith. How about Apostle Cora Lanford? You know, we just want to really, you know, take our hats off to the men and women yes. who actually, you know, died for our country. You know, and we are praying for the loved ones mm. today. We are, you know, asking God to, you know, give you the inheritance that, mm. that, that you know, that they so deserve. And you know what? We just continue to pray for our country. That's all I can tell you right now. Is we just need to pray for our country. We need to seek the Lord. We need to um, know that God is with us, and that you know we cannot, um, you know, really like realize or or what I want to say is that don't look at the world like as as it is right now because there's so much confusion and chaos going on. Yes. But see how. God sees the world and, 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 and ask for peace. You know, we need to pray yeah. peace over this over this country and, and for yeah. other countries around the world too. Mm -hmm. So, you know what, my, my, my prayer is just that we have peace in this world and that God will, you know, step in and we just need to believe that God is in control of, of this um, well said. world right now. Amen. Dear Heavenly Father, we thank you so much for this Memorial Day. That's the day that we all remember and appreciate those who have gone before us and those who fight for the peace of the country, those who fight for the freedom of the country, those who fight in order to give security and prosperity to this nation, those who fight to make America, uh, America great again. Father, we pray that we dedicate their family into your hand. And for those who are still alive, Father, we also want to say, that we need to appreciate them, we need yes, to support yes. them, and we need to remember the great things that they have done, and we also remember yes, their Lord. families, those who have sacrificed for the peace of this country and of the nation, those who have sacrificed too much so that today America is where America is today, and continue to be advancing, and continue to be pros prosperous, and continue to be the nation that lead the nation. Father, we thank you so much, yes, we dedicate this wonderful time, and the time we we can share together, we learn together and encourage one another yes. to remember and to appreciate. But more than that, we will remember the God who protects us in all of those circumstances. We will remember and appreciate to the God who have created us and sustained every one of us and placed us in 
abundantly. Hallelujah. We give you praise and glory. In Jesus' mighty name we pray. Amen. 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 Good work, sir. Good Hallelujah. Work. Thank you so much. And today we will just open in the book of Joshua chapter 4. And I'm going to give you a, just a recap about Joshua chapter 4. And what are we going to learn and what are we going to remember on these days as the Memorial Day. The Bible says that when the whole nation of Israel like uh, and it estimates more than 2 million people were crossing the Jordan River at that time. At that time, the Lord spoke to, to Joshua, said that you have to choose the 12 men from the people, one from each tribe, and tell them to take up the 12 stone from the middle of the Jordan and from right where the priests are standing. I want to focus you to pay attention on this one. Right where the priests are standing. What does that mean? And carry them over with you and put them down at the place where you stay tonight. In chapter 3, you will see that, uh, chapter 4, you will see that many people will begin to, to ask, Oh, what does this stone mean? Okay? And God begin to re reply to them that the stone, this stone we, co we consider as a memorial stone Ooh. that remind the wow. people that it is the Lord who have delivered That's the good. Israelite. It is the Lord who divide the Jordan River wow. and make it it's just like on the dry land so that the people can walk safely from this side of the river bank to the other side and nothing harm happen to them. Yeah. It's a sign that the supernatural God is protecting the Israelite yeah. and He yeah. will protect the Israelite and His children. Yeah. So, we have been talking much about the things that God has done for us. But tonight, I want to focus on something from the human perspective. That's good, sir. From the leaders of the Israelite. From the priests of the Israelite. Mm. Now, let me begin with this. Who was the one who stepped into the Jordan River first? Second question. Who was the one who stand in the middle of the Jordan River while more than two million people, including the children, family, and 100,000 of cattle, cattle, are just passing by? Who was standing in the middle of the river? And then the third question would be, who will be the last one who went to the other side of the riverbank? Ooh. Oh. Okay. But before I'm going to give you that answer, <laughs> let us hear from Dr. Ken Smith. Well, I just think it's a powerful revelation. I haven't seen it preached this way, and I just am so excited to what you're going to reveal to us and encourage us, especially in what a powerful uh, holiday this is. It means so much for us in America. It's the Apostle said, we just love you guys so much for laying down your life for us yeah. and the freedom that we have here and, and the and encouragement we have to be moving nations and being number one in the, in the world, not only in, in our uh, military might, but in uh, economics, but more importantly, Christianity. Amen. Yeah. Exactly. That's what I'm going to talk about. One of the things that today we are celebrating and uh, commemorate those who have gone before us, those who have sacrificed for the country. And today I want to share together with you the first thing that the priests and their sacrifice have brought for the Israelite. Now, if we go back into Joshua chapter 3, we will see that the priests are the one and the leaders and the army are the one who carry the ark of the covenant they walk in front of the people what does that mean they are the one who brought into the life of the people the presence of god oh, the hallelujah. power of god what we can call today is a freedom of religion or the faith in god the one who create the universe the one who create you and i how many of us will remember the sacrifice and the things that these priests or our forefathers have brought into our country. Oh, the freedom God. of religions, yeah. the faith that we have in God. Apostle, would you please just go ahead? You know, I just think that you know when you leave America and you go into another country, you really get to see the freedom. I mean, you really get to see that, wow, you know, you can bring your Bible and you can read your Bible, you can mm -hmm. preach on the street, wherever you want. In America, you can do this. But when you leave to other countries, that you know that are really you know bound by their by laws and government. You you don't have that freedom. 
You know, and so you can appreciate America. You can appreciate the liberty and the justice that we have. And we can just thank God for really our service people. You know, for them laying their lives Amen. down, you know, for us so that we can carry that Bible wherever we go. We can have yeah. freedom of speech. Yeah. Hey. It's just powerful that, that God, you know, has ordained this country to yes. be a blessing so that we can be a blessing to others. And, you know, we have to pray for the other countries Amen. so that they can be That's free true. in Jesus' name. Amen. Many countries today do not have that freedom of religion. Yes. Many countries today have a lot of persecution yes. over the, for those oh, believers or Christians yes. who believe in God. And yes, we have the freedom here. And those soldiers, those founding members already fight for us and they brought the presence of God to us. Hallelujah. They brought the power of God, God for us. They brought the promises of God for us. Hallelujah. They brought the protection of God for us. Hallelujah. They brought the providence of God for us. Yes. Hallelujah. But many times we forget about this. Ooh. And today we even because of democratic society or because of the liberal we begin to fight That's against it. God we begin to fight against our founding fathers right. we begin to fight against the saying that in God we trust we begin to fight against that the saying that this nation is under one God what is going on because we already forget what our forefather has done we already forgot the reason why this country was established. We already forgot the millions of the soldiers who are That's fighting it. for the country in order for you and I will have the freedom to serve the living and the powerful God. Apostle, oh, Dr. Ken. You know, that's an interesting point, and you're absolutely spot on. We have forgotten all things. I think it's so interesting. It's always in May. May means five, which is grace. Mm. I believe God has given us a special grace to repent and Amen. understand what Dr. J is supposed to uh, yes. be teaching us and encourage us to keep in the forefront of our life. There is one God. And look at our money. They always talk about money as uh, whatever's in our heart is going to expose. We always think about money. But on our bills, it says, especially in America, and God we trust. He, he said it first. Yeah. Isn't that interesting? Have we forgot who provides for us? Have we forgot who protects us? Have we forgot who is leading us? Dr. J. You know, that's something that I found very interesting, but it's also an irony. You see, in the U.S., when someone took the pres presidency, they have to make a uh, an oath. Mm -hmm. And then they have to lay their hand on what? Yes. The Bible. <laughs> Is that the Quran? <laughs> Good one. What, what, what do they put their hand on? Bible. That's oh good. That's Is good. that the oh, Buddhist sacred text? <laughs> what good. do they put their hand on? That's good. Bible. Bible. Is that Hindu sacred text? Ooh, <laughs> what, what, what do they put their hand on? The Bible. Oh my Is that goodness. the philosoph philosophical books? No, that's good. That's good. Or the book that Frederick Nietzsche wrote that God is dead? Yeah, that's good. That's good. But I'm telling you today that that's even good. though they lay their hand to make a sworn that in God we trust and this nation is under one God and many times in the practices they are ready to persecute Christians and begin to give freedom to other religions. That's something very, very irony here, and what I can see. That the forefather and the freedom fighter and the soldier, the generals, they sacrifice yes. in order for you and yes. I to yes. have a place that yes. we can claim that in God we trust. And this is the place that the people call as a Christian nation. And let us go back to that. Now, there's something very interesting here. And you see that the priest who was carrying the Ark of the Covenant, how many of us remember what is inside the Ark of the Covenant? And this is exactly what our forefather and the freedom fighter and the soldier who have sacrificed, who are fighting so that we can keep it today and tomorrow and forever. In the Ark of the Covenant, we have, first of all, the Ten Commandments. Ooh, that's good. Secondly, is the abode of manna. Yes. Mm. And good. thirdly, is the star hope. What is that? The star. Yes. The dead star, but it's blossom, right? With the arrow star over there. Not only that, let me tell you something. On the Ark of the Covenant, there is a mercy seat. Mm. 
That's Come right. On. Verse 16, you're right. And all of these will tell us something. First of all, the Ark of the Covenant represents the presence of God. That's it. Our forefather have brought into this land the presence of God. And that's why wherever we go, we don't have to believe in idolatry anymore. Wherever we go, we don't have to be afraid of the witch anymore. We don't have to be afraid of the nightmare anymore. You and I do not have to be afraid of the uncertainty of the future or tomorrow anymore. You and I are not going to be afraid of the devil and the darkness anymore. Because that presence of God, when it is in this country, is going to eliminate all of the power of the darkness. Hallelujah. And yet it's sad that many people do not understand about the value that the forefather of America has. They begin to brought in many other idols, yes. many other worship, many other status. There are many other temples, many other gods in which they are not gods. Hmm. And I want to remind you today that on this Memorial Day, let's begin to focus on this presence of God. Begin to pray and bring back that presence of God. Hallelujah. How about Apostle? Yes, you know, I, I totally believe, you know, that, that God is the same God as yesterday, today, and forever. You know, and I think that, you know, we have so many distractions that, you know, we want to make the TV an idol. We want to make this an idol. We want to make it. that an idol. You know, and we leave, we leave God out in everything. You know, and God is just waiting for us. You know, people are saying, well, I'm just waiting on God. No, you're not waiting on God. You're just being stubborn, and you, you want to just stay stagnant. And so God is waiting on you. He's waiting for you to take the first step and to know who he is and, and to know his heart and how much he loves you. You know, and I just appreciate America so much. I, mean, I, I appreciate our forefathers, you know, the ones who had to lay down you know, their, their lives, you know, for us to even be on TV right now. Amen. That was a sacrifice, you know, and for the freedom that we are able to speak about Jesus Christ and, and how, you know, much he means to us and how, you know, God let, you know, his only son die on that cross for us. I mean, there is so much freedom. There is so much power in the blood. And you must know that, you know, and we are so special. You go to China, you cannot preach the gospel on the street corner. They will persecute you. You cannot go in Egypt and, 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 and hand out Bibles. They will persecute you. You cannot wow. go to Indonesia and start preaching either. I mean, all these countries that I've just named are pretty much either communist or Muslim countries. And they will not allow Christianity to come into there. That's why we have to go undercover. That's the reason why God has helped us to hide and go and to preach the gospel to these people. And when we preach the gospel, guess what happens? The people become free. The people are so hungry for God. So that's the reason why we have to send out many Christians to the other countries so that they can experience the freedom that we have in God. Amen. Amen. Hallelujah. And this, in this Memorial Day, of this first part, we just want to focus the very important things that our soldier have been fighting for and our forefather have brought to this country is the presence of God. And let us declare and reclaim back. There are many places here in the U.S. they begin to, if you talk about the Ten Commandments, later I will talk about that, then you will be persecuted. We are being persecuted yes, yes. in our own land where we profess our God is our God. Where we profess that under God we trust and yet many people have been being persecuted. Mm. So you see that our forefather and the soldier have been fighting for so that we can have the presence of God about yeah. this land. That wherever we go, we can see his presence with the church, with the praise and worship, where we can see sing hallelujah, where we can shout amen and amen, amen. and nobody will persecute us. That's right. Let's go back to that place. Yes. Let's go back to the place that the people will say that in America, churches, even more than three times or four times or five times more than the gasoline station, hallelujah. But these things are now being diminished. But I declare and pray together that churches, let us go back together. Let us be yes, united hallelujah. together. Let us pray together. Yes. So that there's a great revival, a yes. great awakening, yes. a great move of God will happen in this place in Jesus' name. Jesus name. We need the presence of God once again. And then the art of the covenant will tell us something about manna. Mm. 
mm. Mana represent the providence of God wow. because his name is Jehovah Chira. Jehovah, Jehovah Chira means he is going to provide in the wilderness for 40 years. They don't have, they don't need to plant the crops because every day God is one to provide everything that they need. When they are fed up of manna, they want to have they want to have a meat. God just sent immediately sent a quail for them. And they wanted to have the water to drink. God just asked Moses to bring out your stuff and hit at the rock. And today, if you don't trust God, you can hit 100 or 1,000 rock. No water is coming out. But only our God, the God who provides, is going to do that for you. I who know. have provided America from the first day when our forefather has come to this place. He continued to provide and will continue to provide. But many times we begin to forget about the providence of God. We already forget how God has made America to be great, to become a great nation. We already forget the days where the uh, where all the sicknesses, where the, our forefathers have no food, where we have to fight and strive and death has, has come. But in those days, our forefathers trust in God. And that's why we have the thanksgiving, right? But we forget about the Thanksgiving. How about Dr. King? That is, there's so much to talk about. Yeah, that's so powerful, sir. But we need, the first thing I see is leaders, like Dr. Joshua. Amen. In the old days, when the forefathers came over here, because of their religion, they want to practice their religion. They could do it here in America. And three quarters of our forefathers were pastors, deacons. They were real leaders. Why? They knew the word. Mm. Watch this. The man, uh, uh, Proverbs, that talks about a uh, man uh, of his own thoughts, thinks of his own ways, leads to death. Now, God's word is truth. That's the only thing that's going to lead to eternal life. If we don't know God's word, if we're not leading people to God's word, if we're not leading people to God, then there is no plan. It's just death. So I think Dr. Joshua makes a good point. Leadership, and especially that manna, he had a, the manna dropped early in the morning. Isn't it interesting that we have to seek God early in the day to see what we should do the rest of the day? Amen. Second point is they can't hoard it like Dr. Joshua talked about because it won't be any good the next day. Your information is for today only. He'll give it to you tomorrow when he drops the new manna. There's so much there, but it took Moses' leadership. Who put Moses in charge? God, if we put him first, our leaders will follow, and that's how we prosper. Amen. So let's pray and believe together with President Trump that make yes. America yes. great again. Yes. Why did why does he say so? Because he trusts in God. He yes. trusts in the presence of that's God. Right. And he trusts in the providence of God. That's it. Whether it is finance, whether it's the military, whether it is the wisdom, that's whether right. whatever the thing that we need, You're right. God is more than faithful. And now we don't have the, a lot of time to explain all of those things. Mm -hmm. But we see the presence of God, right? With the ark of the covenant. That's it. And secondly, we see that the bow of mana, we talk about the providence of God. And listen, this is very powerful. The commandment of God. That's what right. does that mean? The ten, com the ten commandment of God. That is the promises of God. That's Remember right. the five P today. Okay. The promise, of, the presence of God, the providence of God. The what? What is that? The third one. The promises of God. The promises. That's good. That He wants to be with us. That he want to make a good covenant with us from this generation to generation. There are so many thousands of the promises of God in our life. And if God promises that he's going to make America great, he's going to make America great. If God promises that he's going to bring the greatest revival in the last day, he's going to do that for America. If God promises that he's going to revive and bring a great awakening upon California, you and I need to be ready and to prepare for that because our God will never disappoint us. Hallelujah. Our God will never forget the promises that God has given to us. And we'd like to invite you this September 19 to yeah. 21 yes. of this year 2019, we are going to have many global events, including the Global Worship and Revival Conference. Amen. It will include the Global Charity and Mission Festival. It will also include the Global Leadership Vision Summit. It will also include the Global Cultural Show. It will also include the Global Business Summit at Anaheim Convention Center. Amen. This is the event that we 
declare together. We come together and remember the promises of God. Yes. That He promised that the church will be revived in the name of Jesus. Ooh. That America will become a leading nation, not only in terms of economy or power, but it also in terms of the spiritual blessing to the nation of the nation. That's it. Do you want to say yes to that, yes. Apostle? Amen. I'm saying yes. I'm going. <laughs> oh, I think I'm going to be there already. Yeah, all right. Amen. Amen. Well, you know what the, the, the Bible says that in Isaiah 41, 13, it says, For I am the Lord your God, who takes hold of your right hand and says to you, Do not fear. I it will help you. So you know what? With that, you know, this is going to be an amazing, an amazing, um, um, com- uh, I want to say, event. And, you know, the Holy yes. Spirit is going to be there. You know, there's going to be so many um, vendors there. They're going to be able to set up. There's going to be gospel. There's going to be preaching. There's going to be worship. I mean, there's That's going right. to be prophetic dancers there. It's going to be an amazing event. And I am so excited. I cannot wait to go to the Anaheim Convention Center this in year. September. It's going to be amazing. So you don't want to miss out. You want to join up. You want to join in and, and, and get into this event. Amen. Now, remember of this happy Memorial Day. Remember the presence of God. Declare together That's that right. God's presence needs to be ever present in this country. Mm-hmm. Secondly, we talk about the Ark of Covenant, Covenant, the presence of God. We talk about the bowl of manna, that is the providence of God, right? And we talk about the Ten Commandments, that is, what is that? The promises of God. Yes. The promises of God is can related to in many so many aspects. I don't have time to explain today. But the star, the dead star that God can make is blossom with a flower. What is that? They're talking about the power of God. Wow. That God is going to bring death to life. Hallelujah. Ooh, yes. That God is going to bring the brokenness into the reconciliation. That's right. That God is going to bring hopeless into hope. Yes. Situation uh, that God is going to change the inferiority into the super na- uh, super superiority. <laughs> that God is going to bring the natural into the supernatural realm. I'm telling you that be ready for that power of God to be Amen. activated, and that power of God will never change it because our God yesterday, today, and forever never changes. He performed the miracles of yesterday. Today He is doing miracles, and tomorrow He will do the same thing. The God who can divided apart the Red Sea. He can do the same thing with the Jordan River. The God that who can provide for Elijah by the raven who brought food in the farming time. God can also do the same thing for your life when you are facing the financial difficulty right. right now. The God who can say that the fly eyes have to be opened. God is going to open your eyes right now, whatever it means in the blindness of your life. God is going to do that great thing upon your life in the name of Jesus. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Number 10. You know, it's, uh, that's so powerful that you're saying this. John 4, 48 that talks about Jesus said uh, without signs and wonders, they won't believe. That's what separates our God from any other God like uh, Dr. J was saying. There's all these other religions trying to come in. They have no power. Uh, Acts 1 8, it says, I'll give you power and authority. Yes. God is presence is power. So when we get in the presence of God, how do we get in the presence of God? We start praying. We used to be a nation of prayer. We used to have that in our yes. school. We used to pray before every meeting or every government yes. event. We got to get back to praying. So if you'll yes. come to our event in September, we'll not only will we show you how to pray, we'll give prophetic words to set you in your destiny and calling. You'll understand what God's purpose is in your life. But more importantly, if you come out, you'll see the demonstration demonstrations of his power that we Ooh, serve hallelujah. the true and living God. Amen. Right? Yeah. Amen. Hallelujah. <laughs> we are talking the last part right now before we move to the second part, okay? So we talk about the, the Ark of the co- co- Covenant represent the presence of God. That's good. We talk about the bowl of mana, it represents the providence of God. That's good. We talk about the Ten Commandments. It's talking about the promises of God. That's right. And we're talking about the start, the death start that blossom and become alive again and talk about the power of God for changing, the power of God for transformation. And we talk about the mercy seat. It will represent the powerful sovereignty of God. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. The last point. The mercy seat will talk about the powerful sovereignty of God. That our God is merciful. 
Yeah. Many times we thought that God already left America. No, this is the country that established upon the foundation of the Bible. This is the country who was established by the founders who believe in God, who pray for the religious freedom, who fight for the religious freedom, who fight and begin to share the gospel to other nations. That foundation cannot be shaken. That foundation cannot be changed. Oh, yeah. That foundation cannot be removed. But oh, that foundation yeah. needs to be consolidated, needs to be confirmed, needs to be affirmed and need to be blessed so that this, this nation is going to become great again. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. I have so much to share but because of the time. <laughs> so thank you so much for coming to the pastoral talk with a happy Memorial Day and together with us here Dr. Ken Smith and Apostle Cora Lanford and Reverend Dr. Joshua Yu. Thank you so much and we are looking forward to see you next time in Jesus' name. Hallelujah. Yeah. Amen and amen.